The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Marshall. At the gray close of his life, a very wise man remarked, nine times out of ten, there is no truth to be discovered. There is only error to be exposed. Remarkable, isn't it? What an aged philosopher learns at the end is precisely what a private investigator senses at the beginning. I have something of great importance to tell you. Well, I, 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 I'm busy now. Can it wait? Not too long. Who are you? As I have told you, I am a person with something of great importance to divulge. I could see you now. Well, I told you I'm busy. How about tomorrow? Tomorrow will be too late. Why? Because the world will come to an end tonight. <laughs> Our mystery drama, The Queen of Palmyra, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Fred Gwynn. It is sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Buick Motor Division. I'll be back shortly with Act One. certain beliefs that seem to be beyond dispute. For instance, most people believe that one day the world will come to an end. There may be differences of opinion concerning the how, the when, the why. Some foretell the death of the sun and the subsequent icing of the planets. Others insist that man, heedless, careless man himself, will simply blow the whole business to smithereens once and for all. In any event, most of us seem fairly well resigned to our fate. Most of us go about our own important, if mundane, affairs as if the world will last forever. That is, most of us, but not all of us. You uh, wanted to see me, Uncle Dudley? Sit down. Yes, sir. Have a drink. Uh, a drink? Yes, a drink of water. Uh, well, well, thank you, sir. I'm uh, not thirsty. <laughs> if it were whiskey or some other depraved form of liquid poison, you'd fling it down your obese gullet quickly enough. Yes, sir. This, ah, this is pure elixir of life. I don't doubt that, sir. I despair of teaching you anything, fatso. Sir, may I say something? Only if it makes sense, fatso. That's just it. I don't like to be called Fatso. That isn't true. You adore that name. Oh, no. Oh, yes. If you didn't enjoy being called Fatso, you could change it soon enough. You could stop stuffing that bottomless pit that masquerades as your stomach. Now, tomorrow, make a note of this. Yes, Uncle Dudley. I want you to transfer all my holdings to gold. Uh, I, I, I don't understand. What don't you understand? What you just said. I want you to transfer all my holdings to gold. Isn't that what I said? Well, well y yes, sir. E everything? Isn't that what I just said? The, 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 the stocks, whole... bonds, real estate, everything. Into gold? I want everything I own in this world to be transformed into one single solid chunk of gold. And that'll be all. And what may I do for you, Mr. Uh, McElhaney, is it? Uh, yes, that's right, McElhaney. Hubert Ivor McElhaney. You see, Mr. Carswell... I have come to you because I would like to engage the services of a, a private eye. Yes, I'm afraid you come to the wrong place. But the name on the door says... The name on the door says private detective. Oh. So therefore I am not a private eye. Nor am I a gumshoe, a hawkshaw, 
a Sherlock or a Shamus. Well, now that you say so, I'm that's a licensed true. private investigator, a member in good standing of a reputable and highly supervised profession. Yes, I I appreciate how you feel. After all, my own name is Hubert Ivor McElhenney, but everyone calls me Fatso. Huh? Well, the fact is, you are rather plump. Well, I can't help it. I do everything humanly possible to lose weight. Well, why don't you try a diet? That's impossible. I have neither the willpower nor the strength of character. Uh, why have you come to see me? Be- because something must be done. About your weight? No, about my uncle. Uncle? Mr. Dudley K. McElhenney. I trust you've heard of him? No. But you should know him quite well. Why? He happens to be your landlord. Hmm. My uncle is about to sell the building. He's getting rid of all of his property. What do you think of that? I'm not sure I have an opinion. Well, it's unusual. Most, most unusual. Is that why you come to see me? Yes. I want you to stop him. Stop him from doing what? What, what we've just been talking about, disposing of his property. I, I was hoping we could have him de- declared insane. Uh, in that case, you should go to see a psychiatrist. I, I'm not sure I understand how I can be of service. Well, it, 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 it's a complicated situation, to be sure. It's also rather simple. Really? The fact is, my uncle is insane. Why do you say that? He's convinced the world will come to an end. <laughs> For that matter, so am I. Next month? Uh... Why does he think it will happen next month? Because she told him. She? Yeah, this person who calls herself Zenobia. Zenobia? Zenobia, the Queen of Palmyra. And, and, and who exactly is she? A swindler, a shopper, a confidence operator. You, are you sure? What else can she be? She looks like one, she sounds like one. H- have you any proof? That's why I have come to you. You have to be careful about these accusations. What else can she be if not a thief? She has convinced my uncle to turn all of his holdings into gold. Yes? And hand the gold over to her. In return for what? Salvation. I want you to stop her. Oh. Uh, what is it, Mr. McElhenney? Is uh, something wrong? Uh, this terrible pain. Uh, do you want me to get your doctor? Uh, what do I want with a doctor? It's a hunger pain. Come on, let's go get some lunch. L- lunch? It's, it, it's hardly ten o'clock. It's been over an hour since I've eaten anything. Uh, I'm sorry I don't go out to lunch. I eat at my desk. No. Uh, now, I want to know everything you can tell me about this uh, Zenobia you bring lunch from home? Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra, did you say? That means you have some food here in the office. I want you to describe her. Uh, do you suppose I might have a little... Uh, s- what? Well, just half a sandwich. Mr. McElhenney, if you're not serious about this matter... I'm just as serious as I can be. All right, then, let's concentrate. I can't. I'm hungry. All right, all right, all right. Here. Thank you, thank you. Now, you can charge me whatever you like for it. it just tack it onto the bill. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just help yourself to whatever's in the bag, and let's get on with it. Now, how old is this woman? What is this? A, a cheese sandwich and three prunes? They're rather large prunes. Well, how do you keep body and soul together? Uh, Mr. McElhenney, I'm not running a restaurant now. Uh, you suspect this woman of being a confidence operator, right? Well, I know it for a fact. Ooh, this is such... Absolutely tasteless bread. What you want me to do, then, is to discover evidence of any of a criminal record and present it to your uncle. Thus, she will be exposed. Exactly. Do you have her address? A a description, perhaps? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Here's her photograph. She gave it to my uncle, and her address is uh, written on the back. Yeah. My fee is $75 a day, plus expenses. $75 $75 a day? How can you hope to eat decently on that? No wonder you're starving. <laughs> the problem with my business, by and large, is the type of people you run into. Not as adversaries, but as clients. Well, too much brilliance was not required for my next move. I went down to police headquarters. I showed the picture of Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra, to several of my friends. And, sure enough, there she was in the files. 
Her name was not Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra, either. You must forgive me. At first, I did not hear you ring. You see, I was deep, deep in meditation. How may I serve you? Uh, may I come in? Of course. This is the recandescent temple of Palmyra. All who seek the truth are welcome. Enter. Uh, thank you. Uh, nice looking place. Uh, very neat. We assemble to communicate with the oneness of the universe. There must be no distracting decor. Uh, things must be moving along these days. Blanche. Blanche. Are you addressing me? Uh, Blanche. Blanche Brady. Angel Blanche. Uh, isn't that right? I'm sure you have me confused with someone else. <laughs> That's what they all say. You did three to five for forgery, Angel, and fraud on the West Coast back in... Sir, what are you saying? I took this picture down to police headquarters. I compared it with the mug shot. There are many likenesses in the world, as indeed there should be. Uh, how about fingerprints? Uh, would yours happen to match those of Angel Blanche Brady? They might. <laughs> now we're getting someplace. And I shall tell you something else, Mr. Carswell. Wait a minute. How did you know my name was Carswell? I divined it. The gift of prophecy and the power of second sight. Occasionally these flash before my eyes. Yeah, is that a fact? Uh, uh, tell me more, Blanche. Blanche. Uh, Angel Blanche Brady, did you say? Yes, ma'am. It is entirely possible that I may have been this... Angel Blanche, as you called her. Uh, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. As you called her, that was the name you gave yourself. I may have been Angel Blanche Brady. Huh? I may have led that existence briefly. All of us leave our true selves from time to time. Yeah, we do. Oh, yes. The violent climate of the world shakes us loose from our identity. And some of us never recover. Yeah, well, anyhow, Blanche, the game's over. The... Game. You'll have to leave town. I know. I'll make a deal. Leave quickly and quietly, and uh, because you're being such a good girl about it, I won't say anything to the local cops about your being in town. All of us are going to leave. Huh? What? We are? Yes. You see, 21 days from now, on Friday the 14th of next month, the world shall come to an end. Oh. Uh, in that case, I'd better keep the date open on my calendar. Huh? You don't believe a word I'm saying, do uh, you? You're saying the world will end on the 14th? Yes. Uh, just because you told that to Mr. Dudley McElhenney, uh, you can also tell it to me. Is that what you think? <laughs> That's what I know. My dear sir, I didn't tell Mr. Dudley McElhenney the world would come to an end on the 14th. You didn't? No. He told me. <laughs> Uncle Dudley say that? Our straight-from-the-shoulder, no-nonsense Uncle Dudley? Is it possible? Why do you even ask? Don't you know by now that in our stories anything is possible? This thing requires further development, which it will surely receive when I return shortly with Act Two. each of us. Fortunately, for the continuity of things, it doesn't end for all of us at the same time. However, the way things seem to be going, nothing is really beyond the realm of possibility. There are those who seem to be making their preparations even now. But how do you prepare for something like that? You're saying that according to Mr. Dudley McElhaney, the world will end on the 14th? Precisely. And, uh, just what makes him say that? He has been in touch. In touch? Uh, in touch with what? In touch with things. Uh, what sort of things? The things that are all about us. Uh -huh. uh, oh, oh, where, do, where do you fit into this picture, Blanche? Blanche? 
You keep calling me Blanche. Yeah, because that's who you are, Angel Blanche Brady. That's quite possible. I may have wandered off into another existence where I was known as Angel Blanche Brady. Uh, What sort of person was I? I'm afraid you were not a good person, Blanche. Truly? Uh, Truly. You were a thief. A thief? Oh. Uh, You signed other people's names to checks. That was not a virtuous thing to do. You sold things to people that weren't yours. That wasn't right. The police don't think so either. Oh, I am sincerely sorry. Uh, What's this bill of goods you sold to Dudley McElhinney? Oh, I have sold him nothing. I have revealed the truth. Uh, and, And does he know you were also Angel Blanche Brady? Have you told him that? How could I have told him? I don't even know that myself. Uh, Tell me, Mr. Carswell, do you know who you are? I think so. You think you are Charles Carswell. Are you sure? I got a driver's license to prove it. You may have been snared by his identity. Snared? You see, the universe is filled with identities that have no corporeal state. Do you follow this? Uh, where's it going? Identities hunger for bodies, and therefore there is a constant struggle. Struggle? Yes. You see, there are so few bodies in the world. There are billions. But there are trillions of identities. Uh, about the struggle. A homeless identity is always seeking a body. And when you are unsure of yourself or depressed or lacking in the faith, It can become you. Is that a fact? Oh, yes. That is how I was taken over by Angel Blanche. Uh, How did you uh, uh, shake her uh, and, and get back to Zenobia? Oh, hidden deep within me was the source of conviction. And at the proper time, it shone forth. And I reemerged as Zenobia. Uh, all right, if uh, if it convinces the suckers, why not? How do you know you have not been snared by a consciousness that calls itself Charles Carswell? Break free and become your true self once again. And, and, and what or who is my true self? It will be revealed to you when you are free. Uh, who do you suppose I am? That noble brow... Those deep, searching eyes. You could be the Egyptian pharaoh. You could be the Roman poet, Terence. You could be the philosopher, Plato. Uh, no, I I don't think so. And if I were you, Angel, I'd leave town. I had to get out of there. I was beginning to get the funny feeling that if I stayed around much longer, she might get to me. (laughs) Can you imagine, to me, Charles Fleetwood Carswell? I've spent half my life catching assorted thieves. I know every trick. But she had that jet black hair and those cool black eyes. There's nothing wrong with blue-eyed blondes, but it's the black-eyed brunettes, mostly, who have ruled the world. You could check on it. (laughs) If I'd stayed there another five minutes, she might have had me believing she was Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra. I asked my client to come to my office. You have news for me, Mr. Carswell? I have exactly what you want. Oh, marvelous. What is it? Evidence that Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra, is, in truth, Angel Blanche Brady. Ah, ah. And she has a criminal record. Oh, it gets better. She's been put away for forgery. And what else? It's what you wanted, isn't it? Uh, A criminal record is a criminal record. No matter how you slice it, it's still the same old salami. Salami? Uh, Do you have any in the office? A a little snack would be just the right Uh, thing right now. Here's the full report. You'll find all the details spelled out. And now, Mr. McElhaney, I shall send you a bill and we may consider the case closed. Uh, uh, Not quite. No? Uh, I would like you to present the facts to my uncle. Me? Uh, Yes. You see, it's... It's bad news, and nobody likes that kind of messenger. I'll pay you for the extra day's work. The real reason I agreed was because I was curious. What kind of a person was this Dudley McElhaney? How could he be taken in by an angel Blanche Brady? 
He couldn't amass his considerable fortune if he fell for every hustler who rang his doorbell. Or could he? I was expecting you, Mr. Coswell. Me? Well, someone in your category. You were? My nephew, Fatso, the stomach that walks like a man, he's sure I'm being swindled. And uh, what do you think? I, Mr. Coswell, have seen the light. Uh, uh, have you seen this? A report on the Queen of Palmyra's activities when she was known as Angel Blanche Brady. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know about that. You do? Mr. Coswell, whatever I may be, I am not a fool. When I meet someone, anyone, with whom I intend to have a relationship of any kind, I have them thoroughly investigated. Yeah, as indeed you should. And uh, so you must be aware that she served time for forgery. She didn't. Angel Blanche Brady did. <laughs> oh, we're back to the predatory identities gambit. I don't consider it a gambit. <laughs> I wonder who you are. I told you my name. No, no. Who you are in truth. In truth. I am Charles Fleetwood Carswell. You're positive. Uh, beyond the shadow of a doubt. Hmm. Uh, have a drink, sir. Water. Pure spring water. The true elixir of life. It clears the brain. I think mine's reasonably clear now, thank you. What do you make of me, Mr. Carswell? What do you mean? Well, you know what I mean. Surely Fatso has told you of my plans. Yes. What do you make of them? This sharp, shrewd, cold-hearted businessman suddenly making a 180-degree turn, getting rid of all my possessions. What do you make of it? Why are you concerned with my opinion? I like you, Mr. Carswell. Uh, why? You remind me of what I used to be. Cold, impersonal, dedicated to ideas, involved with mundane things. Uh, I, I really haven't given much thought. Well, that's not true. You've thought about nothing else. Uh, now relax, Mr. Carswell, and tell me the truth. Oh, I'll, I'll pay you for your time. Not that money will have any value to any of us three weeks from now. Oh, why do you say that? First, answer my question. Well, there's an obvious answer. What is that? It happens to many people who've spent their lives amassing wealth to the exclusion of other things. They begin to look for higher meanings, greater values. And quite frankly, they become suckers for the clever hustle. Hmm. You believe that's what's happened to me? Basically, yes. Mr. Carswell, would you like to work for me? In what capacity? Oh, in your usual investigative capacity. I believe her. I believe her with all my heart and with all my soul. Yes. But, uh, I... don't, don't interrupt. It's very difficult for a man like me to, to say these things. A heart, soul, and so forth. Uh, this is not my kind of language. I understand. You believe her with your heart and soul. However, you do not quite believe her with your brain. Have I stated the problem? Uh, well... Yes. What more is there I can do? I I have here evidence of a criminal record. What other proof do you require? Mr. Carswell, convince me somehow that the changes that have taken place within me are not real. Uh, you, uh, you say changes? Changes in the way I, I think, feel, see, hear, believe. No, I don't understand. I accept those changes. I believe them. But, but some small, slight, even fragile vestige of the self that was called Dudley McElhaney still persists, still torments me with tiny doubts. The self that was called Dudley McElhaney? Is that what you just said? Yes. Then I must assume you no longer consider yourself to be Dudley McElhaney. Well, I'm not. No. Ninety-nine percent of me says I'm not. It's that lonely but persistent one percent that keeps whispering to me, you are, you are Dudley McElhaney. Uh, let's analyze the majority vote. Uh, what does the ninety-nine percent say? It says that I'm Aurelian. Aurelian? Lucius Domitius Aurelian, emperor of Rome. <laughs> Hmm? 
Lucius Domitius Aurelian, born in the year 212, made emperor in 270, assassinated in 275. That should have been the end of him, wouldn't you think? However, here we have Dudley McElhenney who says, no, I am Aurelian. On the face of it, we could say Dudley is mad. But how many times in our history have the madmen been right? Which is not to say they weren't also mad, if you know what I mean. We'll meet again shortly for Act Three. Old soldiers, as they used to sing in the British Army, never die. Well, perhaps we can say the same about old Roman emperors and old Syrian queens... They seem to be turning up and attracting the attention of our private investigator, Mr. Charles Fleetwood Carswell, who is, even now, talking to one of them. Lucius Domitius Aurelian. Uh, it has a nice ring to it. And uh, she has made you believe that's who you are. Yes. Yes, it goes against every principle I used to hold, against every way I had of thinking and seeing. But I believe it. How can either of you prove that you are Aurelian? I have the feeling. <laughs> Feelings don't count. What are the facts? When did it begin? About a month ago. She came into my office, and I'll never forget what she said. I've come here to save you. Who are you? Have you forgotten? Uh, madam, are you saying we know each other? Very well. I've never seen you before in my life. Not in this life, perhaps. Um, yes. Look, I'm very busy, so if you'll excuse me... You were also too busy last time. Last time? I sent you a warning. What are you talking about? You paid no attention. Now, really, I, I don't know how you got in here. A month later, you were assassinated. Who was assassinated? You were. You, Lucius Domitius Aurelian, Emperor of Rome... Oh, I, I see. And I was the Emperor of Rome, eh? You still are. <laughs> well, that's, that's something. And, and who are you, if I may ask? Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> nice running into you again after all these years. Once again, your life is in danger. Oh, well, I understand that's par for the course for us Roman emperors. This world, this world we live in, must come to an end very shortly. Well, I shall see you again very soon. Then she just walked out of the office. I thought I could forget about it, but it just kept sticking in my mind. Aurelian. Lucius Domitius Aurelian. <laughs> I kept saying that name over and over again. Why? Well, I don't know. I just did, that's all. And soon, I came to know all about him. How? I don't know how, but I knew everything. How he was born, how he grew up, the things he did and said and believed, how I became emperor. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You, you just started by saying he, and now you just said I. Because I am convinced that I'm Aurelian. I even speak Latin. Did you study it in school? <laughs> I only studied subjects that pertain to the making of money. But now things seem to be coming back to me. Non libet, my favorite expression. I always used to say, it does not please me. Palman ki meruit ferat. Let him who has won the palm, wear it. I hated imposters. There can be only one explanation. You went to the library, you looked it up, you read it. No. You may be unaware of this. Oh, for goodness sakes, what is that odor? Fatso! Fatso, are you home? Come in here. You called me, Uncle Dudley? What's that dreadful emanation? I'm having a salami sandwich in the dining room. Well, get rid of it and shut the door. Uh, no doubt you recognize Mr. Carswell. Uh, he, uh, yes, sir. I had employed Mr. Carswell to uh, secure some information that I'm sure is enlightening. You wasted your money. 
Yeah, but, Uncle... Uh, that will be all. Well, I'm only trying to help... Run, Liebet. It does not please me. Leave us. Yes, Uncle Dudley. And close the door. My own flesh and blood, but an obese moron. Uh, you may be a bit hard on him. Well, then, she called on me again. And what does she have to say this time? What kind of game are we playing here? The game of life and death. The game that the immortal gods have always played with us here below. But now, they tire of it. What are you talking about? They have decided to end it. End this farce, this tragedy. And to return us all to the universal oneness. Once again, there will be destruction. The 14th of February. Why did you say that? Well, I... I don't know. That was the day of the destruction of Palmyra. See? You remember. You remember. But, but I... And I... that is the day the world shall end. Cleanse yourself. How? The 14th of February approaches. Shall you be ready? Oh, what am I supposed to... Turn all the irrelevance into gold. The irrelevance? All that is not you... The gold represents the vain strivings, the foolish pride, the false satisfaction. But I... Uh... Bring it to the immortal gods as a sacrifice. A sacrifice? You shall bring it to a place that I will tell you about. And you shall exchange the gold for your salvation. And you bought this? Well, I, I know what it must sound like to a hard-headed, practical... But when you look into those deep black eyes, you believe it. And you're turning everything into gold? Yes. It'll come to almost half a ton, over two million dollars. And I'm going to load it on a truck and bring it to this cave. Oh, that, I know what it sounds like, but I believe it. If you believe it, you believe it. But I know I shouldn't believe it. <laughs> so, what do you want me to tell you? Would you believe it? No. But don't answer so quickly. Go to her. Talk to her. What if she's right? What if she's right? <laughs> well, it was an assignment. In effect, he was saying is coming to an end on February 14th. See if I'm really Lucius Domitius Aurelian, Emperor of Rome, and find out if she is Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra. <laughs> Crazy? <laughs> well, that's the nature of the business. Ah, Mr. Coswell. Or shall I call you Terence? Terence? A Roman slave. Your master set you free. You took his name, Publius Terentius. Terence, a remarkable poet. Uh, continue. See, you don't know quite what to say. Shall you laugh at me? It was such an outrageous sounding statement, wasn't it? Uh, absolutely. Then laugh at me and leave. Leave. Am I not a fraud? Am I not Angel Blanche Brady? Is it not my intention to swindle Dudley McElhenney out of every nickel he has in the world? Uh, that's what I'm here to find out. To find out? But I had supposed it was a foregone conclusion. Do you mean there's a possibility that I could be Zenobia, Queen of Palmyra? That he could be Lucius Domitius Aurelian, Emperor of Rome? And that you could be Terence, the ancient Roman poet? I don't think I could be Terence. Why not? I never heard of him. Then why do you talk like him? Uh, what, have, what, have, what have I said? Listen. Uh, to whom? Uh, uh, to what? To what you said, oh, so many years ago. You asked the question. Uh, what question? Ask it. Ask it again. I, I don't know what you're talking about. But I did know. Somewhere, something in my brain was beginning to form. An idea... Of a, a, a conscious thought was taking shape. And words, words, uh, it, at first they were strange and foreign, but only for a moment, 
Words. Words. Homo sum humani. Nil a me alienum puto. Oh, those were your most famous words. I am a man. Nothing human is alien to me. You are Terence, the poet, the playwright, the philosopher. You have been captured by the identity of Charles Fleetwood Carswell. Free yourself. Join us. I'm... I... I, I don't know what you're talking about. Listen. Listen to what you are talking about. Nothing is said that has not been said before. <sighs> that is what you said almost 2,000 years ago. It is true. You are now saying nothing that you have not said before. You are Publius Tereshius, the poet Terence. It sounds crazy to you, huh? <laughs> but you weren't sitting there in the room. The room with the slightly sweetest smell of incense and the faintest tinkling of silvery bells. And you weren't looking into those eyes. Those black eyes. I, eyes so deep, so dark that it seemed there must be all the mysteries of the universe inside them. Come with me. Be saved. Join us. Realize the oneness, the completeness. What do I have to do? Change your earthly burdens into gold. Uh, there won't be an awful lot. It doesn't matter. We shall all sacrifice together on the 14th of February when we shall leave this world, this poor doomed world. And we shall dwell, we the fortunate few, shall live forever. Well, Mr. Carswell, what do you think? I think I am Terence, the Roman poet. That tells me everything. Are we crazy? How, how could we fall for this? It's true. We believe it. I believe her without reservation. I'm ready. Are you? I... 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 I, I guess so. It was happening. Huh. How could it be happening? Here I was on the night of February 14th. A calm, cool, peaceful evening. I was driving a small truck. Inside was a half a ton of gold in neatly stacked bricks. Up front with me were Dudley or should I say Aurelian, and Queen Zenobia. Uh, I, I was crazy. It, it, it was a swindle. It was, it was just a hustle to steal our money. But it didn't matter. I didn't care. Besides, that wasn't true. It was real. She was telling the truth. We turned off the highway. We drove along a narrow, deserted country road... And then we stopped at what seemed to be the mouth of a cave. We shall bring the gold inside the cave. And there we shall make the sacrifice. Sacrifice? Uh, how? The gold shall be piled high as an altar. We shall call upon the immortal gods to take it. We took the bricks of gold inside the cave. Little one-pound bricks but well over a thousand of them. Most were his, of course. But it didn't matter. Uh, we piled them high and they gleamed in the rays of the moon that made their way inside the cave. And, and finally it was done. And the altar was complete. And then she said, Believe. Believe with me. Do you believe, O Lucius Domitius Aurelian? I believe. Do you believe, Publius Terentius, that you are freed finally from the false identity of Charles Fleetwood Carswell? Do you believe? I... I believe. At that precise moment, I... I believed. I, I felt as if I were bathed in light. I trembled at the edge of overwhelming truth. When... When there seemed to be something, something out of place. What, what was it? Uh, it, it, it was a smell. The, uh, the unmistakable smell of salami. I turned around quickly. There was Fatso. 
pulling back the hammer of a large forty-five caliber revolver. But before he could... Look out! What? What is this? This, I guess, is a swindle. He and Angel Blanche plan to get you up here and kill you. Right, I won't believe it. I, I, I can't believe it. Z- Zenobia, where is she? I, I, I guess she's gone. Uh, Fatso should be out for a bit. I'm sorry I had to hit him so hard. It's impossible. I don't believe it. Don't believe she... The two of them arranged it. To make it look even better, <laughs> they decided to turn a private detective, me, loose on the scheme. Just to make it look good. I should have tumbled when she knew my name. Who could have told her? Then the world isn't coming to an end. Uh, no, uh, not tonight. And I'm not the Emperor Aurelian? Uh, it uh, doesn't look that way. How, how did she do it? Hypnosis. Auto-suggestion. But it can't be a lie. It, it can't be... I am the Emperor Aurelian. I know it. I am the Emperor. To this day, he believes it. And to show you human nature, he was so angry with me for bursting that little bubble, he refused to pay me my fee. Oh, well, if you think he was a nut... You should see some of my other clients. <laughs> and maybe he will one day. Certainly, if they're anything like Mr. Dudley McElhenney, they're worth an hour of our time. Well, this has been a story that proves the old adage. What old adage? If you want to sell a crazy harebrained scheme, your best customers will prove to be practical, hard-headed people. I expect all my customers to meet me here in just a few moments. All the people who've lived and died, is that the end? Is everyone born into the world someone brand new? If a human being is a spirit that animates a corporal entity, does not that spirit live on when the perishable flesh disappears? Therefore, although we may have a fair idea of who we are, is there any way of knowing who we were? Our cast included Fred Gwynn, Bryna Rayburn, Jack Grimes, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and True Value Hardware Stores. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.